You guys, you probably don't want to watch this video. It might be something you put on in the background while you're watching something else on your laptop if you're uh, that kind of person. Um, it's more about what I'm going to say than what I'm watching. Sure. None of you are interested in watching someone play Skyrim. Well, I thought maybe I could go and cover a few subjects that have been sort of getting up my nose a bit lately. Uh, mostly down to the leadership of this country and just what a bunch of cowardly, dim-witted people they seem to be. And I suppose it's the same in most countries. One thing I learned from a very young age, normally the guy that's managing the business or the guy that's running the business or the guy that owns the business really doesn't know what they're doing with it. I mean, it just seems to me so much of the time it's on luck that they actually managed to make a successful business. So firstly, you can hear it squeaking a lot. This, that's my chair. It's old, but it's comfy, so. Um, rather than seeing my ugly boat race while we were doing this, I thought I'd let you watch my place go around. Well, the first thing I want to cover, David's, David Cameron's latest idea to try and get people to buy houses is he's going to start giving out people 20% uh, right on a mortgage. Oh dear, we've got to punch up straight away. You have quite the he's going to start your head in the giving up 20% on a mortgage. Yeah. Failing to understand the root cause of the problem here is very little to do with it is partly to do with how difficult it can be to get a mortgage in case the banks aren't lending, even though they should be. More to do with the traditional retail aspect of supply and demand. There isn't enough houses to go round. So, how on earth are we supposed to buy houses that just just don't exist? It begs the belief that the, the people that run this country can't see even something as simple as that. Um, the average minimum wage worker in this country earns just under 16,000 a year. Now if there's two of you applying for a mortgage together, if you're lucky, you can get 120,000. If you're lucky, that's even if the, uh, that's even if the mortgage company will lend you the money in the first place. It's difficult to even come up with a deposit in the first place. Um, and I, I don't understand why these guys that are supposed to be our leaders can't see it in, in the simple, well, can't see it for the, the simple problem that it is. Take the money you're going to invest in your shiny new mortgage scheme and you, uh, you build some houses with it, David Cameron. You've got cheap labour. You've got 50, 40,000 low security prisoners that you can use to build these houses. You can teach them a trade. Why not? Why not invest the money you're going to put in this ridiculous mortgage scheme? Why not invest that money in actually doing something that's going to help people in the long run? Because helping people get a mortgage. I really don't think that's going to help solve the problem. And I think the problem with with politics in general, especially in a country like ours, we say we're um, we're a democracy, but we're not. It, this country is an elected dictatorship. Once the person is in charge, they're in charge. Uh, by the way, I'm only supposed to be picking things up that I find with this particular character. I shouldn't be looting any corpses. So only stuff that's laying around. Um, what was I saying? Use the prisoners. Give them the ability or teach them a trade, simple trades, chippy and basic chippy and carpentry, enough to get them in with, you know, potentially a builder. Ooh, death Lord. They're gonna start shouting at me. Enough to get them in with a builder. Enough to get them in with a builder so that Maybe once they've finished their sentence, they, they can actually get themselves a job. Rather than having to go back to selling drugs or stealing or anything like that. But uh, these guys just don't see it like that. 
Me and my wife have been living in this place for 10 years. It's, it's a housing association place. It's rented. Ooh, that looks dangerous. It's a housing association place. It's rented. And we've got some debt that was built up from being on benefits a couple of years ago. We had an overpayment to the tune of 5,000. As it stands to live in this modest little flat, we have to pay out nearly £1,600 a month. How do I get through there? Um, yeah, £1,600 a month. That is, I would imagine, a minimum wage. Really quite difficult to come up with. Oh, I hate it when they do this in this game. <coughs> I'm self-employed, I, I work for myself at this very desk, there it is, this very desk that I'm sitting playing this game at. My wife works in a shop, she does shifts, so she's out of the house all sorts of different hours all the time. Hi. Um, I'm not allowed to loot corpses, I kill, by the way. Or whatever's in that chest. I'm not allowed it. I think I've only got one lockpick on me, so I'm not going to bother doing that. And we, we struggle sometimes. I, I'm, I'll be the first to confess I'm quite lazy. I really don't like working. I certainly don't like working full time. Time is all you have after all said done. You don't get much more than time. And working full time before you even realise it, half your life has been spent making money for someone else. So I, I work for myself. I do an average of three days a week. It gives me four days a week to do what I want. If I want to sit here and play Skyrim, fine. I can do more, but I don't like to put myself in a position where I'm earning three or four times as much as my missus because it, it makes the financial side of a relationship really quite difficult. <laughs> You and I want to have a little buy, to to take, take the family out for a day out. Ooh, nice. Um, and for me personally, I, I don't like being out. I, I lived with someone else in a position where I was the sole breadwinner and they sat around at home all day, supposedly doing the housework. Um, <clears throat> and I don't like it. I like my entire relationship to be shared. Rather than, oh, I'll have that. What's that potion? I'll have that as well. Uh, I like the entire relationship to be shared so that both people have an equal part in it. Bruce, so, the next thing I've got in this area is going back to the whole investment, trying to get prisoners to to build the buildings. Why are we not building small communities of 10 and 20 houses at a time? Or hide for a little, I think. 10 or 12 houses at a time that are fenced in and gated off so that livestock can be kept. And trying to not put technology to the side, don't get me wrong, I, I embrace technology, but the older way of life has always seemed to me to be far more sensible, far more, we, we all rely on petrol. We rely on fossil fuels for everything. And I don't think that's such a good idea. I don't really like I don't like relying on anything aside from myself because life has taught me that even the people that are closest to me can't necessarily rely on them ever to do what I to pay them away. Oh. And another one. You can't expect them to behave in a way that Duty to your People have let me down all my life, left, right, and centre. Now, whether that's just me, whether I'm an arsehole or something like that, and I, you know, can't put me in a position where I deserve to be let down. But I didn't get that shout, did I? Okay. Oh, I'm dead. Um, 
people have let me down left, right and centre all through my life. I don't understand why it is our leaders don't seem to get that they need to put more money in our pockets in order to overcome this supposed financial recession we're suffering from. <coughs> a couple of years ago I was talking to a client of mine about it <coughs> and both of us agreed. The media start talking about a financial recession coming or financial difficulties coming. Um, people immediately start tightening down their purse strings, they stop spending money and we actually cause the recession ourselves. It's not something that happens without any input from, from us as, as, as consumers. Our entire economical system is based on consumerism. If we don't go out and buy GTA 5 or go and buy our, our basically our daily bread, then the shops can't survive. If the shops can't survive, the shops can't employ people. Now, the way out of this recession is, is not by harebrained schemes. Um, I have got some decent arrows, by the way. I'm just using up the steel ones because it's quite a pokey bow. I've got some dragon bone arrows. Um, the shops won't survive without, without our money. And without the money we give them, they can't take the staff on. They can't give the staff the hours that the staff need. Ah, uh, my bad. So, curing a financial problem or a financial crisis such as that that seems to be going on across the developed world at the moment is not about injecting money in the top. It's about starting from the bottom and working your way up. By starting at the bottom and, and giving better tax breaks for everybody, not just for a specific group. We know leaders love to give married people better tax breaks or people with children better tax breaks. Um, it needs to be done for everybody. We'll, we'll have more money to spend and We'll spend that money in the shops, we'll buy laptops, we'll buy new TVs, we'll buy clothes and the whole chain from top to bottom actually starts with the common man. It doesn't start with what they so call, what they love to call job creators. There is no such thing as a job creator. Um, because without me spending my money and you spending your money in the shops, there's no jobs. So how? One person or one business can be classed as a job creator. Oh, look at that great big thing, and I can't take anything out of it. What we got in there? Oh, nothing great, anyway. Um, one company isn't really classed as a job creator. Take Tesco, for example. If we are all so skint that we cannot afford to go and buy from Tesco, Tesco is a non entity. It's gone literally overnight. And our leaders need to understand this. How do I get through there? Our leaders <laughs> don't understand it. They, they, they live in their ivory tower. Um, I haven't seen a leader of this country for a long time that actually looked like someone I would, or acted like someone that understood how life works, let alone, you know, all the other complex things you have to take into consideration when it just comes to living. In this country, we pay a thousand pound a year community charge. That's basically for street lights, policing, uh, having your rubbish taken away. <clears throat> we pay 20% of VAT on just about everything we buy. We pay, oh God, it's frightening how much, how much tax we pay on uh, petrol, gasoline and diesel. The taxes on diesel in this country the tax itself is actually taxed. The fuel duty that they add on has VAT applied to it as well. So we actually have the honor of, of paying a tax for a tax. I, I don't get it, it despairs me. It, it doesn't free up money in my pocket. 
it doesn't allow me to spend more money so that the, the shops can take more people on or expand. And a, a small business like myself, although I can get more work and I can take other people on, I, I don't want the responsibility of having other employees that I've got to find the money for, not in this, in this climate anyway. I don't, I don't want to take someone on and pay them minimum wage. I want to take them on and pay them a decent living wage, you know, 10, 12, 15 pound an hour, so that they, so that they do have a good reason to go to work. So I'm moving on further with the work situation. I suppose it kind of stands to reason that something has to be said about the uh, ridiculous UK benefit system. Um, by the way, this is a, another character. It's only level 10. Um, this particular character, is, there's a few rules that apply to it. All of this has been built from money made by literally growing things in a garden and hunting. But anyway, the game is beside the point. Um, I know people, there are people that live close to where I live that are in their early 20s and already have three children. Um, I know other people that are in their 30s that have never worked, never worked. These are couples and the particular couple I'm, I'm thinking of, they're friends of friends of friends, very distant, but they have six children. Every one of those children was born, raised, is born and raised on other people's money, on, on benefits. And while I understand the need for a, a welfare system, what I don't understand is, is how it can be legal or moral. Uh, how it can be legal or moral, moral to basically just allow people to keep breeding when they're being paid for by the people that actually work. Um, the first family that I mentioned, I know I'm quite well, they don't live far away. They've got three little girls, two of them are older, uh, second, uh, primary school age. They're, they're nice kids, they shout a lot. Dad works locally, um, but unfortunately he does shift work. He works for a minimum wage and I'm sorry, there's, there's no way on earth they can afford that family on his earnings alone. So something needs to be done in this country with, with the, the benefit system. I, I've got members of my family, my nieces and nephews, that have never worked but have children. My son, one of my sons, is, is been diagnosed with ADHD. Personally, I think ADHD is the biggest crock of shit, or one of the bigger crocks of shit going. It's, it's not a disablement. And how does his mother deserve extra money each month? I don't know how much, and I'll be honest, I don't know whether she gets it, but he is classed having ADHD as being disabled. Now, I know there's lots of people out there that are going to say, oh, well, it is a problem to deal with. And I'll, I'll say to you people very simply, the only reason it's a problem, the only reason your children are diagnosed with ADHD is because you do not know how to discipline them. My son's school is constantly complaining about his behaviour. His mother is constantly complaining about his behaviour. I never see any of the behaviour, any of the behaviour that they complain about. None of it. He's bored. He's intelligent. He's clever enough now at 10 years old to know that he can do what he wants at school and they will do nothing to punish him. Now, again, uh, digressing a little bit there, but this does boil down to money. Um, the benefits that my ex gets 
for the two children, even when she's working a full-time job, and I, I take my out of to her, she does do her best to try and keep keep working. When you've got two kids and they both go to school, it can be difficult to work if you're a lone parent. But on an average month, she makes as much money from benefits and, and doing 16 to 30, I think it's between 16 and 30 hours a week for just above minimum wage, that me and my wife make all told because of the amount of benefits money she can claim. And that's just one family. That's, that's one woman and two children. A couple that live down the road, they've got three children and, and two adults. Now, like I say, the guy, the, the dad does his bit. He works a pretty crappy job, but he does do his job and he gets benefits. Now, I'm sorry, but can the government not see that the, the benefits that work like this, they're basically giving employers the ability to pay people absolutely, excuse my French, shit money. Knowing damn well that the state, i.e. the other taxpayers, will top up the difference. I better turn that down, because that'll be feeding back, won't it? I forgot about that. Um, so what we have in this country is working families tax credits. So a family of four, mum, dad and two kids. Dad works, mum stays at home and looks after the kids. Dad only makes minimum wage, so maybe, maybe I'm not too au fait with minimum wage. I think it's about £6.80 an hour, 40 hours a week, 16 grand a year thereabouts. Um, I don't know what that would work out in a week. Let's have a quick look. You need something? No, I don't need anything. Well, I do actually, I need a calculator. So if we say, 40 hours times 6.80. That's 272 pounds before tax, so probably just over 200 quid after they've been taxed. Well, let's not forget, once they've paid their income tax, they've still got to pay tax on everything they buy. So they're taking home, say, 200 pounds a week. Oop, I'm bad with a calculator. 200 times 4 gives them 800. They live in, in on the same estate that I live on. The house is the same as this, apart from it's a downstairs one. An £800 per month. They can barely afford to pay the rent and council tax. Let alone feed themselves. So, you have to work under the assumption that their money is being nearly doubled in benefits. Why should big business be allowed to take people on knowing that those people are going to have to turn to the state to support them? Again, it's, it's another thing that just completely beggars belief. That's all very well me sitting here complaining about the financial ills and, and how bad this country is running. I mean, I'm wandering around the plains of Skyrim with absolutely no purpose whatsoever at the minute. I should, given that I have pretty good problem solving skills, come up, be able to come up with some way to, to fix it. Now, a lot of you people that have even taken the time to sit down and listen to this probably won't like what I'm about to say, but if you are on benefits and you conceive a child, you give up the right to claim benefits for that child forever. I'm not talking about children that were born Children that were conceived whilst the family was on benefits. You should not be allowed benefits for those children, ever. Because it shows just a, a complete lack of responsibility, financial responsibility, responsibility for that child, and responsibility towards everybody that pays taxes. Some of you have probably seen a film called Idiocracy. That's the way this country is going. That's the way this world is going. The thick people, the dim-witted people, the people that can't support themselves, they are breeding like wildfire. The rest of us that pay our taxes, that work, that go through the drudgery of driving the same route to work every day and back and pay, counting every single penny to try and make sure we've got something safe for the future, we're the ones that don't breed. The clever ones, the inventors, the architects, the engineers, 
while the, the, the dull, scrounging, stereotypical, I don't know how to explain it without cursing and swearing. I don't really like cursing and swearing in a public forum. Some people don't really care, others do. I'd, I'd rather not if I can help it, but I don't know how to explain what I would call these people, but bottom feeders. They're the ones that we really need to deal with harshly in order for the rest of us to not have to support them forever. The benefit culture in this country is growing substantially. Look, Skiva, he can see me. And there's something else to see me. And now he's going to come and get me. Have I got a knife or anything? No, no we haven't got a knife at all. So we'll have to bow him in the face. Education is another subject I want to touch on. Um, both myself and my wife, I went, I was, I'm 10 years older than my wife, so I was schooled very differently to her. But she went to a grammar school, so she got quite a good education. Two of my children are going to the same secondary school I went to. And a lot of the kids I see, I, I appreciate they have their own language just as I did when I was a teenager and you did when you was a teenager, but we could also speak English. And I'm seeing more and more that the children can't speak English when they're a long shot. They struggle with English. My 13 year old daughter, she is absolutely atrocious. Her spelling is atrocious. She was standing outside McDonald's the other day when she sent me a text message. And she didn't even have the noddy to look at the sign before she spelt McDonald's. And it's, they're not taught these days to want to learn. And for me, that's a, a major problem. But anyway, this video is supposed to be about the financial state of the country. And the financial state of the country is basically in the last 10 years since I first, first moved in this flat. This flat now costs twice as much to run than it did when we first moved in here. Twice as much. The electricity bills, e. The electricity bills are twice as much. The gas bills are twice as much. The council tax has stayed roughly the same. It's gone up by about 30 or 40 quid in the 10 years we've lived here. The rent has gone up by nearly 100 pounds, 150 pounds, something along those lines. Um, shopping bills. When we first moved in here, we would spend probably £50 a fortnight. Now we're spending £150 a fortnight, and we're not really eating any different to we were back then. I'll be the first to admit, I don't even eat particularly healthy, but if you saw my teeth, you'd see why. I have huge fangs. I'm a meat eater, a vampire, whatever you want to call it. I even hate daylight, so I don't hate daylight, but I'd rather sit in a dark room than a bright room. I'll be honest, I can't, I've lost inspiration, I can't really think of anything else to add. I think you've got the general gist. I know you probably can't see what I'm about to shoot at, but there's some walls about a hundred yards away. I'm going to try and get them. I don't think I will, especially not first shot. I can't really think of anything else to add. Ah, I'm going to be on the rocks. But you get the idea that, that if the people that run this country they haven't got a clue. The people that run this country need to get out, come out here and try and live in the real world. Forgo their expenses accounts, which personally I think, I don't think politicians should have expenses accounts. They should have the average salary. You know, I think in this country the average salary is supposed to be about 35,000 a year. Uh, I only know a handful of people that earn that sort of money, and they've had to work bloody hard to get that. Who's this? Oh, it's the old orc. Those people have had to work really hard to get that. Who's the other cat then? There's only two. I think it's gone in the river and floated away.
having to work for four or five years from college then university to be find yourself in a position where you can earn the average wages it's just not right and the bigger businesses that the, the firm my wife works for they pay terrible money terrible money store managers are only on 20,000 a year General assistants, like a retail assistant, a tail tart, checkout operator, whatever you want to call them, they're, they're on 20 hours a week. Uh, um, I think it's £7 an hour, or just shy of £7 an hour. The next level up from that is a shift manager. The shift managers earn £7.30 an hour, or £7.50 an hour, or something like that. And I'm sorry, but I was earning that working on a building site when I was 17. I'm 40 now, so you're talking 20, 23, 24 years ago, and I was earning more than a, a first level management earns these days. And again, I, I despair at where the country's going. People don't work because it's just not worth it to them. One of the arrows. Again, this character only picks things up or, or makes things. I don't pick up armor or anything like that. I make armor to sell it, never in steel. But guys that play this game, you know damn well it's hard to come by steel. You need lots of gondom and lots of iron ore. And once you've been around the mines and dug them all out once, and we have a mine over here that I've dug out. We have this one here that I've dug out. There's another one. Yeah, Fort Felhammer, that's been dug out. Um, I was going to come over here, work my way over here, because there's a corundum mine over there. Anyway, um, probably about time I'll wrap this up. Instead of sitting here rabbiting on when I've actually got nothing to say. Uh, I'll probably make a good DJ, because I can waffle on for hours and hours about nothing. But I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Oh, there's a fight going on there. Now what's going on there? Yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch or listen, whatever you want to call it. Ooh, free loot. In a minute, when they finish fighting, we're going to get some steel arrows out of it. <laughs> Repeating myself again. Thank you for taking the time to watch. And, um,. I should put another one of these up soon if I get some hits on this within a week or two. I'm not sure what subject yet, but there's plenty I have got to nag about in this country. See you later, guys. Bye.